that you might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him. See, that's what he's talking about when you're trying to, right. when you're trying to teach people, unsaved people, the Word of God. Amen. It makes no sense to them at all. It doesn't. It doesn't make a bit of sense to them all. What is the same? Over in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses uh, 4 and 5. God is he tells you this. He says, and this is exactly what you have uh, taken place. He says this. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I've told you all before, I had a, a woman who I showed that to. She couldn't understand why, she could not understand the King James Bible. She said, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just too hard. And she said, I don't know why, you know, because... Actually, it's a lot easier to understand than the others. And uh, I said, well, here's the reason. And I read that to her. And she said, I don't understand. <laughs> what I just read. <laughs> and so, going back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now here you go. These are the two key verses. See, and if you remember these verses, when these people come up to you and say, Christians are not to judge. And I've had, I don't know how many times I've had people professing Christians tell me that. I said, where in the world did you ever get that? That's not what the Bible teaches. And guess what? You know, when you ask them that, when you ask them when they when they tell you, judge not lest be be judged, say, where's that at? They don't know. They don't know. They're not, they can't exactly. tell you. It's in Matthew chapter 7. They can't tell you that. They never read the Bible. They're parroting what they've heard somebody else say. Amen. And so, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Now listen, you say, whoa, why, I have a problem with that verse, Pastor, because it seems like everywhere I go, people are judging me. I mean, the whole world is judging us. You know, they're calling us wackos. Uh, they're calling us uh, right-wing fanatics. Uh, uh, everywhere you turn, they're judging us. Yeah, but their judgment has no weight. It doesn't mean a thing. Amen. It's got absolutely no authority. Amen. No authority at all. No. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have... You say, well, what does that mean that we have the mind of Christ? It means... This is the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord right here. You have this, and this is how you make your judgments. It's not complicated at all. Okay? So we go now over to, to chapter 6. And in chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, here's the reason, folks, is why we have the Ecclesiastical Council. Now, the Ecclesiastical Council only works those people that are smart enough to use it. If you're not smart enough to use the Ecclesiastical Council, it doesn't work for you, you see. It's kind of like, you know, you're sitting at home and there's a, you just snowed, two feet of snow, and you look out and you see that snow shovel leaning up against the wall. <laughs> and you're hoping that that shovel will shovel up your wall. <laughs> But that shovel won't do it unless you use it, see? You've got to use that shovel, right? 
Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? By the way, folks, he's not talking about dead people, you see. Uh, in the Roman Catholic Church, they, uh, you become a saint under the dogma once you're canonized. But under the Word of God, the Bible, you become a saint immediately upon receiving Christ as your Savior. You see. So, if every, anybody and everybody that's born again is a saint. Amen. And that's what he's talking He's not talking to dead people here, is he? Nope. Do you not know that the saints shall be judged the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? You say, well, what are we going to judge the world? Because the world's been judging us. It's called the Millennial Kingdom. In that Millennial Kingdom, we will be judging the entire world, the saints. And guess what? The ACLU will be no place to be heard. <coughs> they'll be being judged. And there'll be no appeals court. There will be no appeals court. Know you not that we shall judge angels? Right. How much more things that pertain to this life? You see, that's what got old Lucifer turned into Satan. You see, he was in the throne room of God, and when he found out, that God was going to have these puny individuals that he had made in his image. You see, now, God didn't make man puny. Adam wasn't exactly puny, you see. But because of sin, uh, I, I hate to tell you, folks, but we are, <laughs> we are very, very, very poor. Uh, well, <laughs> poor relatives. Oh, yeah. Fably, we have become much feebly physically, mentally, in every way than Adam was. Adam and Eve were prototypes. And, you know, those in geology proves that men has degenerated greatly. Uh, most of, of the research and the diggings and, uh, and all of the skeletons of uh, the pre-flood days show that the average height of men in those days was about 14 feet tall. And women were about 12 feet tall. Yeah, the vast majority of people don't know this. You don't realize it. And to, to some of you, that sounds like it's, it's absolutely startling new information. But back to a lot of us, we've known this for years and years. And this is why that whole teaching of evolution is such foolishness. Because, you see, communism or secular humanism is, is based upon... They had to destroy the evidence of the Bible. And so they had to base that upon evolution. And guess what? Science destroys evolution. Science just totally destroys the fantasy of what is called evolution today. He goes on to say, If you then be judged, if then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life. Set them to judge who are at least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? Do you understand who he was talking to? He was talking to the leaders there in Corinth. They prided themselves on their great wisdom. Uh, they would go down to the pavilion in town, and uh, and they would each would, men would get up and they would try to wax eloquently and articulate and. Uh, tried to show their wisdom. That's what they did in those days. And so he's in there in Corinth where they prided themselves on their great wisdom. And he's asking if, any, if there's not one single wise man among any of you. Okay. That had to get their attention. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there's not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brother. But brother goeth to law with brother. And that before the young believers. Boy, if that's not a problem today. Now therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take the wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brother. So he's talking again about judgment. Now if we're to judge angels, folks, don't you think we are capable to judge other matters. Amen. And then, I want you to turn over to Romans chapter 16. In Romans
Romans chapter 16, just two verses, 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of simple. What he's doing is he's, he's demanding that you make a judgment call. He's demanding here that you make a judgment. That's what he's doing. Now, if you turn to Colossians chapter 2, and in Colossians chapter 2, uh, verses 16 through 23. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of the holiday, that's a holy day, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day, which are shadows of things to come, but the body is of Christ. But let no man beguile you of your reward and voluntary humility, worshiping the angels, intruding into these things which thou hast seen, vainly puffed up by the fleshly mind, and not holding the head from the that which all the body and the joints and the bands have nourishment minister and knit together increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in a world are you subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, or which are all are to perish with the using after the commandment and the doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and all worship humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. So what is he saying? He's telling you folks, <laughs> uh, beware of the pork police. Right. Um, there, there are people out there that will tell you, you cannot, don't eat pork. Oh man, I'll tell you what, there are, there are, the pork police can be, well, but almost as bad as the pork police of those that are out to make sure. And I'm talking about the Christmas tree vigilantes. The Christmas tree vigilantes will come and they will look through your window if they see a Christmas tree there. And they will say, You are worshiping that tree. So beware of the Christmas tree vigilantes. <laughs> are you saying, are you telling us we should have Christmas trees? No, not at all. I'm not telling you that. There are places where, uh, but a Christmas tree, folks, uh, is only a tree. It's got no power. It can't do anything. Now, if you pray to that tree, you're worshiping, and that's a sin, okay, and that's idolatry. But I'll guarantee you this, and I know this for a fact, because I've proved it. That tree will not answer your prayer. You can pray to that tree all day, that tree will not answer your prayer. You see? See, if that tree could answer prayers, it'd still be in the ground. See, I know these things, right? But then, when that, those two groups get together, the pork police and the Christmas tree vigilantes, they join up with the sons of the Sabbatarian. Those that tell you, if you are not worshiping on Saturday, you're going to hell. And so, yes, <laughs> you have, you have these, these groups together. And we've had them come to this church. We've had them bring in their heretical tracks and try to sneak them in on our track table. And, uh, anyhow, I'm going to close out here and finish this. We've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Superior Road in Newberry, Ohio. Our zip code is 44065. We'd like to hear from you. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa, in Tampa and Ocala. Until next week, we want to say God bless, good morning, and remember always, always, keep fighting the fight. All right, yeah, the, the Sabbatarians will tell you. I think sometimes.
Ives the Sabbatarians could be the worst of the bunch. They are, uh, they are more. Now look, is it wrong to worship on Saturday? No! No, whatever day, but for them to tell you that the Roman Catholic Church started Sunday worship, well, that is absolute foolishness. Absolute foolishness. It's called the Lord's Day. You read that in Revelation chapter 1, which is Sunday. The Apostle Paul, uh, the Lord changed it when he arose on a Sunday. And the Apostle Paul says, when you come to church and bring your tithes, do it on the first day of the week. And the first day of the week is what? Sunday. Now, who was first, the Apostle Paul or the Roman Catholic Church? <laughs> right. I knew it. Okay. I want you to turn over uh, to Jeremiah 5. And in Jeremiah 5, just one verse. Just verse 1, Jeremiah 5. Run you to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if you can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, that I will pardon him. In other words, he's saying, you're in big trouble, people. You're in really big trouble. Unless you can find a man who comes, and he executes the truth and judgment. In other words, he's talking about accordance to the will of God. If you can't find one, you and you in trouble because yeah. God's not going to pardon you. And then, if you go to First Kings chapter three, and First Kings chapter three, starting with verse seven. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made a servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child; I I know not how to. Go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge the people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. The speech pleased the Lord. You see, again. God is happy when we judge with righteous judgment. Right. And then if you turn to Proverbs 24, you're all familiar with this verse. Yeah. Starting with verse 23 through 26. Proverbs 24. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good in every respect of persons and judges. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse. The nation shall abhor him. But what does that apply to? First of all, it, it applies, it says, when we're to judge, we're to judge the same judgment. We're not to have a different judgment on, let's say, family members or people that are close friends or people that are uh, influential, people that can reward us if we judge them lightly. It means we're to be totally just and not non-discriminatory. Right, right. We judge, we use the same judgment for everybody. And then, no respect to persons. I want to finish with one that you all, that you all read at least once a month, at least you should be. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 30 through 32. <coughs> for this cause, Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That means many have died. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened to the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. In other words, God will take us out of this world to keep us. And what is he talking about? He's talking about, when you, in this particular thing, coming to the Lord's table with unconfessed sin. For... Failing, failing to confess the fact that you're a sinner and you've sinned. And failing to ask for forgiveness of your sin. Right. But for Christians, for believers, even though he takes us out or he makes us sick, he does that because we are his as chastisement. 
but he doesn't send us to hell. And that's the good news. Amen? Amen. Amen.
thankful I made it this morning. Uh, last night I was up for a long time working on my new tablet trying to understand it and get it to work for me and get back online because uh, my uh, desktop I was having more problems than you can imagine with uh, constant invasion of uh, viruses and unwanted programs and uh, after I prayed a little bit the Lord gave me some pointers and I got rid of some of those uh, unwanted programs but they keep wanting to come back but anyway last night my legs were kind of swollen and I didn't get much sleep and this morning I was really feeling kind of low until I uh, spoke with you on the phone and you said we were going to have a great sermon this morning and thank the Lord we did have a great sermon and I thought to myself I got to get there to get that sermon recorded so that I can put it out for the Great Commission over the internet and you may as well go to bed on time because no matter how long you spend with this, you're never going to understand it. Yeah, I can, I'm coming to that conclusion. If I could just understand part enough how to operate the thing, I'll be doing good. Well, I've been having victories over my smart aleck phone, too. I'm not letting it get to me like it used to. <laughs> Thank I the Lord. Just, I just laugh at it. We, we, have, we have people that call here all week long, and yeah. then when you answer the phone, there's nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. that every, every you, day. you figured out how to send the information to this tablet. I don't know how. It, yeah, but my it phone, has to be a close proximity. if you put my phone close to his tablet, it'll transfer whatever comes in from my phone to his tablet. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. And folks, that is that is strange, but right, it's not boring, is it? We don't have boring days. Anyway, I didn't think I'd make it this morning, but I did. We always want to know what's going to happen. Yeah. 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 I think they tried to call Kevin and say, I don't think I can make it. I heard yesterday. Can I thank everybody for signing up? Yeah, tumbling around with this thing. Take that to America and then That is the 22nd, Sunday the 22nd. Get some in, you're going to work that three weeks. Yeah, well. That Sunday we'll be out of town, so Grandma's going to need a ride. Oh, we have that. Yeah. That Sunday Grandma's going to need a ride. Oh, wait a minute, no, you're right. I think he's not going. I forgot. Never mind. Well, we're going to need a ride. Bottom of the ride. Let's get on with you. 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 Well, here's what I'm doing. Well, it will. The other church out there. And I'm taking the Gatsu Cola. I think most of them will this time. And I'm going to get some. Come up here and have fellowship. Make sure they sign that too. That means we can stay. You know, yeah, have some Korean cool rush down and free loading. Korean and red, and we can get them all to come up here. Yeah. I got to go to, to, to make two cola. Like I have that, I'm taking it. Yeah. But the uh, so Korean red ginseng. Oh, they'll break their stuff. That's what they're saying. Saying that it's uh, so even what more effective against cancer. Bring the, and join us here. And that way, and the turmeric and the uh, berberine together, they all potentiate each other. And I'm taking also extra um, exanthine, the uh, anti. Um, okay, who needs prayer today? You notice we got a, a new prayer chair. Oh, we got to take an offering. All right, we got to pray for the offering. He's a turkey on there. Coupon says he's a turkey. Yeah, I'm going to get turkey. Yeah. Now he's bringing three turkeys. Wait, Coupon's. Three he says turkey? he's a turkey by three. The who? You're a three-time turkey? No, I plan on getting three turkeys. Okay. Just as soon as they come on sale, I just need somebody that can properly uh, cook them. Listen, what about, can you get something for the rest of us? Yeah, that's what I expect. <laughs> <laughs> I expect everybody to enjoy them. It's cooked, right? He thought that was a request for what he was going to eat. Oh, uh, I was 
put a brick. 